to the Stars Academy, ladies and gentlemen. This is the government's official disclosure initiative. If you don't know, you got Tom DeLong, Luis Elizondo, Chris Mellon, uh, Hal Putoff. All these guys are former CIA, Pentagon, um, DOD, all that good stuff. Bringing out the government's official disclosure narrative. And that's the whole reason I started this weekly show, because I wanted to keep up on top of this, break news as it happens, stick with it, try to stay, figure out who's going, you know, what direction, what the hell they're doing. Because there's a lot going on here. Their narrative, of course, they want to push this evil alien thing. And uh, it's kind of scary on the surface, because we were warned about this from Warner Von Braun, that they're going to play this last card. And it just drives you insane, because it's like, oh, well, they got some good points. And it's like, well, let's see, let's see. Well, they're really going to do it, aren't they? They're really going to do it. Now, this last episode, they were getting into the shutting down of the nuclear silos. I'm going to play some B-roll for those watching. The nuclear silos, I talked about the Rendlesham Forest incident that happened in the 1980s that was in Selfirk, England. Again, I think this is just leading into that scary narrative there's craft, we don't know, unknown origin craft, shutting down our nuclear silos. And oh my God, folks, it's a threat. You know, if they had a threat, why wouldn't they coordinate, shut off all our nuclear silos and attack? Not like go back like 50 years, shut down one nuclear silo, wait, shut down other nuclear silos, and then not do anything else. Believe me, if this was a big attack, you know damn well Luis Elizondo would have found an, an attack somewhere like, oh, this uh, UFO um, started this war, and maybe they will go to that point, because I suppose there is the, the Battle of L.A. that happened, but I think that was just us shooting at a UFO, and it wasn't even doing anything. But this was a big episode. They even got into Richard Doty there on screen, who was a misinformation agent for the government to the UFO community. I just watched that Mirage Men the other week. Crazy stuff to feed in disinformation. So again, in that Rendlesham Forest incident, there was a red light in the forest. One of the sergeants that walked up on this thing was John Burroughs. He talked about a loss of time. He had actually saying that he, after that he got health issues, his eyes, he had a life-threatening scarring on his heart. He went in, they saw that, uh, I believe it was through an x-ray, they saw something on his heart. Or no, it wouldn't be on an x-ray. Um, whatever machine that does that. They seen scarring on his heart, and I was like, oh, you got to get this checked out and fixed. So, uh, and he did that. But then in 2012, when he went in to get his military disability benefits, this is what was crazy about it, is because they found out his records were basically scrubbed and he didn't exist. Like, total, total, like, if there's not something important here, folks, why would they scrub it? Again, just to push the threat narrative. Oh, he got abducted by these aliens, and now they're scarring on his heart. Not to say that that couldn't happen. Um, you know, there is uh, reptilian aliens, if you will. But I don't. Why would they just like pick and choose? Maybe if something natural happened, he got close to an e EMF drive or something, and then it it did something. You know, there's so many possibilities. You can't just. It's like me stepping putting my hand on a, a hot pipe and then blaming the pipe that's part of a craft and saying that the evil craft got me. You got to really think about this in a, in a 4D way. So Richard Doty, I want to touch upon this. Remember the counterintelligence operative. I didn't know much about this guy at all. And I watched the Mirage Men. Basically, he came out saying he was this whistleblower because this one guy spotted all this craft above a military installation and to just get them not to think that it was military stuff, they're basically saying it's aliens just to, like, put disinformation in there and uh, really muddy the waters, if you will. So people don't know what's, what's right and what's wrong. Now, in the unidentified, they basically, a lot of people are like, is Luis Elizondo another Richard Doty? Because... A lot of people think, oh, he's there to give disinformation. Um, one thing 
that uh, they do stay in here. They state in the unidentified on episode five is he had a background in counterintelligence and disinformation. Luis Elizondo did. So it's like his job was to feed disinformation. So, you know, he's good at it. He's been doing it for so long. I showed that clip a few weeks ago about him giving that speech at a at a UFO aerospace conference, answering questions and stuff. You can tell he's just bullshitting some of that. Excuse my language, but he is. And um, that's his job. And he got really good at it. So they insist that they're not deceiving, of course, that there's just some broad people that came out of the government. They had to infiltrate from the outside, come back in because they wouldn't listen to him on the inside and then go through Congress and get this conversation going. Luis Elizondo states, and I quote in that episode, I've been trained to deceive the enemy. You're not my enemy. Well, how do we know, number one? Number two, why couldn't the government use him as a tool? I think a lot of these people that are meant to bring out like disclosure that, you know, if they get nudged the right way, and this was part of Richard Doty, if they can nudge these whistleblowers the right way, playing to their ego a little bit, because, you know, if you get some guy coming out saying, I was in the secret program, this is what happened, um, you know, for a, a guy with a show like me, whatever, it's going to be intriguing to us to bring that out publicly for the first time. It's Of course, it's going to lead into that ego. And I think a lot of this infighting in the UFO community is what we have is all a part of this. Uh, Lyndon Moulton Howell being involved in some of that. I think, you know, when she got PO'd about David Wilcock using her uh, video in his presentation, I mean, even though he gave credit, it's like, come on, like, don't you want the story out, number one? We're all on the same page. Let's just get the truth out there. As long as he gave credit and didn't take your whole presentation and take credit for it without get That's the whole thing with copyrights. I don't mind if somebody takes like a section of this video, comments on it, whatever, reposts it. But, you know, to take the whole thing in its entirety and repost, that's kind of like, okay, then there's something there. But even then, if you just leave it, and this is why Alex Jones is smart about this, he's take the video, repost it. You're just going to get bigger because when somebody's listening to you, and they hear a part or one video that only got posted, they're going to want to hear more. So they're going to try to find the source and go to the source and listen to it, which will bring you a bigger audience. But that is a little harder now with YouTube censorship. But again, to state the To the Stars Academy threat thing, you got to trust Luis Elizondo. He's a rogue person that didn't like what the government was doing coming out and uh, saying there's more here for the public to look at. The last episode, they did tease it, everybody, that it's going to start shifting into talking about aliens finally. So this is the last one. They, they knew to keep this for the last episode. So I'd say if there's one to watch, it's going to be this one. Um, how are they going to, like, spin it? I think they may be just acclimating the people a little bit to say there is some alien stuff here. Or it could be, let me rephrase that, it could be they want to keep that possibility because they don't want to say absolutely that it is aliens, even though it is. It's all public. So, yeah, with that, Tom DeLong did do a tweet on, this was June 27th. So he says, everyone will know the reality soon, and unfortunately, it's not just something to laugh at. It's pretty unnerving with some bad news, some good news. And with that in mind, all we can do is deal with it honestly and openly. And I think Grant Cameron responded to this tweet directly at Tom. He says, enough with the evil alien stuff already. So this is meant to push the evil alien thing. And when you watch Unidentified, folks, in the chat, is there a lot of people watching it? Let me know. I'm going to try to do a little poll here while I'm on air live and see if there's a few watching it. They knew, the, the government knew to groom Tom DeLong. Hey, we can use this guy to get to the younger people, get it out there to an audience that wouldn't normally look at this stuff. It's so perfect. It's like, let him think he's in control of the narrative. 
And uh, that's hugely important when you're doing something like this because you got to let them think that they're in control and running it, but you slowly nudge them here and there. So in the chat here, we got Mike Jackson seen every episode. Shane says we don't get it out here. Um, Shane, you can actually find a channel on Vimeo that has it. Just go to Vimeo.com and type in unidentified UFO, and it'll come up in the uh, search. Um, I don't know how long it'll last, but it's been up there since the first episode. Um, that's where I've been watching them at. Oh, Mike Jackson paid for it on iTunes. <laughs> you didn't have to pay for it. It's it's on there, but uh, I don't know how long it'll be there. Um, but yeah, folks. Again, it's all just a technique to steer. Steer the alien narrative. And I think they did this with uh, Stephen Greer and also um, Bill Moore. I didn't know much about Bill Moore. I haven't even looked into him. I'm trying to stay up with the relevant stuff and not go so much into the past because there's so much to keep up with. But uh, again, uh, when I was listening to Grant Cameron the other week too, he was talking about, and I, I said this last week, but for those who didn't hear it, how Bob Lazar is a part of this. Get him in there, show him some craft. You know, usually you think compartmentalization, you only work on that one craft or that one part of the craft. But they showed him everything. They gave him a, a history book, basically, with where the craft came from, uh, Zeta Reticula and all that stuff. And why do that? Because I knew he was in touch with John Lear. John Lear would leak the story, start getting that. And this was all in preparation for what we're seeing now, get the public uh, woke to some of this stuff. And Bob Lazar did it for me. That was one of my part of my awakening. A lot of people say, oh, Bob Lazar, he's a fake. I don't think so. I think he's truly seen what he's seen. I don't think he likes to be in the limelight. You can kind of see he's kind of, you know, a little weird and like nerdy that doesn't want to actually. I'm like Stephen Greer, who loves the spotlight, loves to have all these conferences and charge an enormous amount of money for him. So got one more article to cover, I think, before we hit the break. Shout out to the chat here real quick. Shiny Roberts says, who's going to East SETI? I sure as hell am. Uh-huh. Going to be a great time out there. Looking forward to seeing some UFOs. Again, I'll be out there on the 8th through the 11th. They're, they, do, they do have the 4th of July conference going on. It's already been sold out for quite a while. Corey Good, uh, Allison Co., Jordan Sather, the guys from... Uh, um, Edge of Wonder, I'll be there doing presentations. So it will be great. All right, let's do a transfer. Do it now. By the way, folks, if you wanted to call into the show, go ahead and do it. I'll hear your inputs on the To The Stars Academy stuff. If not... I would love to have you plan the call in next week because next week's, you know, the last episode will air this Friday. Just kind of give a whole synopsis of what you think about it, where the future of disclosure is going, because this is the most important thing in human history, folks. Okay, so I talked about the other week about uh, Project Veritas with their, the video came out about the censorship with Google, basically admitting that they do censor conservatives and they can say what they want to say. Well, here we go. Vimeo bans Project Veritas Natural News on the same day as criminal tech giants collude to silence independent journalism. So now Vimeo is one of the bad guys as well. Oh, yeah. The video platform Vimeo has banned Project Veritas and Natural News on the same day, taking part in the criminal collusion among tech giants who are systematically silencing independent journalism that keeps exposing the criminality of tech giants themselves. Project Veritas has released a bombshell video showing a Google executive named Jen Jenai who admitted on camera that Google is engaging in massive criminal scheme to alter election outcomes and silence conservative speech. Uh, uh, 
no, they're uh, they're straight shooters. They believe in free speech. Every time they go to Congress, too, they get these people up on stage or get in question. Um, ask them questions. Oh, uh, we're for, I don't have access to that information. Well, what the hell do you have access to? I love the one of the comments that people put on that video is like, why does Google send, or no, they said Congress needs to tell Google to send somebody that can actually speak for the company instead of sending these damn broom pushers because they don't know what's going on. It's like they're just told to say this stuff, and it's just like, well, it's just going to be this ending thing where they always say that they believe in free speech. No, they don't. Oh, that's our community guidelines. Of course, community guidelines can be stretched any way they want. Okay, for Veritas, despite being banned by YouTube, the video remained available on Vimeo, BitChute, and Brighton, where it continued to gain huge viewership. Vimeo disabled the Project Veritas account, shutting off all its videos and taking down the particular video that revealed Google's massive criminal enterprise, which is now openly admitted by one of its own executives. <laughs> and they got a nice little graphic here on screen. Enemies of humanity, they had them, Adolf Hitler, Joseph Stalin, Pol Pot, Mao, and now it's Mark Zuckerberg, Jack Dorsey, Jeff Bezos, Sundar, and Tim Cook. <laughs> That's how tyranny happens. It happens with people that you don't think would do it. Like they, oh, I, I own a company. You know, now it's like it's just because technology is different. We got to think about different ways of control. They used to have to control through the government. Now they can control through tech. So they got to catch up with all that. Of course, there was the quote there with Jen Jenai. We don't want 2016 to happen again because it just felt like the people got screwed over while the people voted. No, because only people in California in New York matter. Uh, you guys are only thinking in an urban environment. So that's that. You're banned. You can't have that, you're banned. So with that, I think we'll go out to break. When we come back, we're gonna talk about the Facebook insider stuff, confesses all, gang members getting paid in California. This is crazy stuff, folks, and much, much more. Stay tuned on Talk is Cheap. Have your voice heard today. Call into the show at 1-605-562-0444. Show ID 146509. Please hang up and try again. Hey, Dan Ophelt here. I'm here with Pete. Pete, we got a trip planned. Where are we going? Hey, Dan, we do. We have an exciting trip planned to the East City Ranch out in the state of Washington. We're heading out there August 8th through the 11th. If any of our uh, fans and watchers want to come join us, get on eSETI.org and book your time now, man. It's going to be a great time. We're going to see some cool stuff and have some fun. Sounds great. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing a UFO.